Guys, we do a split at the end of this, a few questions for Sunday to Monday. <coughs> How, uh, how frustrating was that to take the lead again and then lose it again? Yes, I'm very disappointed today. I think uh, the performance deserved um, three points. I think we lost two points. But uh, in the Premier League, if you don't put the game to bed, you know, in the last 10, 15 minutes, this type of team, they just need a long ball, a second ball, a set piece, and you can give the, the points away. So that's it. It feels like... One goal lead is never enough for us at the moment this season, not just with you here. Mm. There's always nervousness in the crowd and, <coughs> and the players. Yeah, and there is a history of that. I think it makes it even even more. But in the Premier League, you go one nil up. The last 10, 15 minutes, be careful because anything can happen. Mikel, does that suggest to you the level of the work you need to do and what you inherited from the previous regime? Because at times in, against Leeds, against Man U, all of the way, you, you were looking good, but th there's something up there. Is it just the fitness levels, or do you need to undo the work that was already done for your methods to bear fruit? I don't know. You know what it was done before? I think they tried to do the best uh, possible thing. Uh, I heritated a team that it was in a difficult situation. We're just trying to, to improve it as much as possible, but I don't know. In the second half, they didn't generate it anything till the goal. It's just one long ball, uh, a second ball, and someone from an incredible angle puts it in the top bin. It's difficult to control. Eh? What, is it a case of fitness still for you? Because I know you wanted the fitness. You told us about the fitness mm. levels. Are the fitness levels there today? Because for some reason, you, you couldn't get out of second gear today, maybe, or maybe third was max. What, what was the lead reason for the lethargy today? I think they all went full gas. Um, I think they all try really hard. I think we put them under real pressure every time. We didn't allow them to come out the way they do. They start to generate the overloads in wide areas and control the second phases and put bosses in the box. I don't think that was the case. Maybe in the first five or ten minutes that we had to figure out a little bit the game. But after that, I think it was. But obviously, when you are one nil up the last ten minutes, they changed to back four. You know, they started to commit more bodies forward, both full back high. They have six players in front of the ball it's more difficult to control. You play long balls, the second ball like this is, is not easy. Do you think you should have had a penalty? I think it's very clear. Can you speak to the referee about it? No. Um, Mikhail, we, we spoke about um, the need to step in for Pierre and <coughs> Aubameyang and the other players to step yeah. up. Um, Gabriel Martinelli did that today for you? Absolutely, he's an 80-year-old kid with all the enthusiasm, but as well, he's so brave to make decisions, to threat the opponent every time. He's all the time in the middle of the goal, waiting for the opportunity to come. And um, and the fact he hasn't played 90 minutes for a while now since his injury, but still, you know, the way he went about every single action is it's impressive. It's still, it's still nine goals now, I think. That's an astonishing record, given as you say, you have football he's played. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, you called over Martin, um, Ainsley Maitland-Niles and you have a chat with him uh, mm -hmm. during the match. Was that specific instructions? Because if you look at their goal, it was inability to clear the header in mm -hmm. his area. Um, was it something along, along the lines of that, the instructions you're trying to pass on to him? Yeah, obviously when we, when we are analysing the opponents and the scenarios that are happening in the pitch, we have to try to correct and to try to help the pace as much as possible. But uh, yeah, we can ask Ainsley a lot of things, but he's, he's not a fullback. He's Bukayo. He's not a fullback, you know. And uh, they're trying to adapt as quick as possible, and they try to help the team as much as possible to that. But uh, uh, these things are going to happen. Okay, um, what's the news on Reese Nelson? Mm -hmm. How serious is the injury? Was he here watching today? Was yeah. scan? No, we had an incident uh, in training, and the doctors are still deciding you know how long it's going to take but um, but it's not looking good Mikael, with the africa cup of nations being moved to january in 2021 from the summer yeah. how is that going to affect arsenal bearing in mind that you have pepe and Aubameyang? Uh, let's see it's, it's it's something that we are talking with the club to to figure out exactly the scenario that we're going to be looking at it's not only us there are many other clubs involved but um, 
I don't know. They never ask those questions to us, so we, I'm assuming that we're going to have to accept whatever it comes. Does that change your philosophy in terms of the transfer markets when you're trying to buy African players, for example? Uh, mine at the moment, no. Okay, folks, we do a split. 10.30 deadline tomorrow, Sunday night.